Hi uh, everyone, uh, this is Ms. Linda. I hope you're doing well. Uh, today, inshallah, we're going to continue with topic five, uh, uh, electricity and uh, magnetism. Uh, we're going to solve question number four from the document. We have three identical light bulbs, X, Y, and Z. Each of them has a resistance of four ohms. So we have the resistance R, 4 ohm, and they're connected to a cell, the electromotive force of the cell 12 uh, volt. The cell has negligible internal resistance. The switch, S, this we have a switch, his, is initially open. So when it's open, that means there is no current that will pass through this branch. The current will go to X, Y, and Z. Calculate the total power dissipated in the circuit. For power, we have three formulas, either I times V, current times voltage, or I square times R, or V square divided by R. Here I have resistance and I have voltage, so I can use the last formula, V squared over R. So power P will equal V squared divided by R total. Y and Z, they're connected in series, so R total just add these resistors, the values. So the voltage will be 12 squared divided by, each one of them is 4 ohms, so it will be 4 plus 4. 12 divided, 12 squared divided by 8, it will give us 18 watt or joule per second. Joule per second or watt. Okay, B. The switch now, the switch is now closed. State without calculation why the current in the cell increase. When the switch close, I will have two branches that will be connected in parallel. When you connect in parallel, the total resistance or the equivalent resistance will be less. When you have a less resistance, the, the, of course, the current will increase. Okay, C. The switch now is closed. Deduce the ratio Power dissipated in lamp uh, light bulb Y when S is open and power dissipated in Y when it's closed. So I need the power dissipated in Y when it's open, when the switch is open and power dissipated in Y when the switch is closed. OK, let's start with the open first when the when the switch is open, when the switch is open. I don't have any current that will pass through the branch that has the light bulb X. All the current will go to the second branch, Y and Z. So the current, I'm going to put first, I find the current will be voltage divided by the total resistance. Voltage 12, total resistance 8, and this will give us 1.5 amp. From here, I can find the power dissipated, the power dissipated in Y when it's open. Can use this formula because I have the current, I square divided by the resistance. All of them, they have the same resistance. So it will be 1.5 square times four, and this will give us 9 watt. This is when it's open type. When it's closed, let's do it here. When it's closed. First, I have to find R equivalent. Now remember here, let's draw the circuit. I have 12 volt. 12 volt. Here, this is the light has a resistance. I'm going to draw it as a resistance uh, 4 ohm. And here, 
two resistance four and four. It will give me eight. Um, this is R X and this is R Y and Z. R X and R Y and Z they're connected in parallel, so I need R equivalent. R equivalent. I'm going to multiply them. So four R equivalent, or I can call it R X Y and Z. Four times eight divided by four plus eight. And this will equal 2.67 ohm. After we find our equivalent, we should find the total current that will pass through the circuit. So the circuit, when I simplify it, it will become. Here it's 2.67. So I need to find the total current. The total current will be voltage divided by the total resistance R, X, Y and Z. And this will be 12 divided by 2.67. It will give us 4.5 amp. OK, second step, third step. So first we have to find R equivalent, then total current, and then RIV table. RIV table. So let's do it here, RIV table. R. OK, let's make it smaller. OK. Move it there. OK. R I V table for the first resistance X I have four all of them is four ohm so second resistance Y also four ohm third resistance Z also four ohm now we're going uh, backwards I have R X is connected in parallel with with the cell 12 volt so it should have the same voltage as this cell 12 volt so rx is a 12 volt okay how can i find the current voltage divided by the resistance from ohm's law v equals i times r so the current voltage divided by r voltage divided by r Okay, so voltage 12 divided by 4, it will give me 3 amp, 3 amp. Now, resistance R, Y, and Z, it's connected in, ser in uh, series. But just erase this one here. Okay. Y and Z is connected in series. If I want to go back to with the drawing, it's four and four together. Since they're equal, the summation of their voltage should equal to a 12 volt, which means the voltage across this is Z and this is Y. The voltage here should equal the voltage there because they have the same resistance, equivalent res the, the same value of the resistance. So the voltage here, when I divide it 12, it will be 6 and 6. 6 plus 6, it should give me 12. So here, this is 6 and 6. Now I need the current. The current is voltage divided by the resistance. 6 divided by 4, it will give me 1.5 and similarly here 6 divided by 4 is 1.5. Now I need to calculate the power. I should I, I don't need to calculate all um, the power only. 
only for resistance Y, only for this one. So power P equals I square times R. I square is 1.5 square times four should give me nine. So they have the same power. Same power. When it's open, it's nine watt. And when it's closed also, it's nine watt. So the ratio nine over nine should give me one. So the ratio of open P of the resistance Y is do it here. So the ratio of P for Y when it's open divided by PY when it's closed should give me nine divided by nine will equal one. Okay. D now. Uh, D, this is high level. Uh, this is from topic uh, 11. Uh, topic 11 high level. High level. High level. Okay, we have a cell now uh, is used to charge a parallel plate capacitor in a vacuum. The fully charged capacitor is then connected to an ideal voltmeter. The capacitance of the capacitor is six microfarad, so this is C, and the reading of the voltmeter V is a 12 volt. Calculate the energy stored in the capacitor. Energy stored is half capacitance times V square, also equals half charge times V and half charge square divided by C. Since I have C and V, I can use the first formula. So the first formula E will equal half C times V square, and this will equal half C is six microfarad times 10 to the power negative six times V square, 12 V square. And this will give us 4.3 times 10 to the power negative four, the unit is joule. Okay, when fully charged, the space between the plates of the capacitor is filled now with dielectric with double the permittivity of a vacuum. Now remember the capacitance, the formula for the capacitance is epsilon naught permittivity of a free space in vacuum divided by epsilon r or k in some books they use k is the permittivity of uh, the material or relative permittivity of the dielectric uh, material times the area of the plate divided by the distance between the plate, the distance between the plate. So if I put dielectric material, I'm actually increasing the capacitance. If I increase the capacitance, same charge, the charge will not be changed, same charge, if the charge is constant and increase the capacitance, what will happen to the energy? You know, look at the, the relation between energy and capacitance. They're inversely proportional. Energy, it's half Q square over C, half is constant. So if I increase the capacitance, if the capacitance increase, okay, the energy will decrease. So when you double the energy, when the capacitance doubled, uh, is doubled, the energy will be half, halved, okay? So just in terms of conservation of energy, the cause for the above change is because the work, we do work when we insert dielectric material, any material other than uh, air or vacuum into the capacitors. That's it. We are going to continue with the same document, inshallah, in the next uh, videos. So follow up with us.